The mainstay of treatment for brain metastasis is radiation therapy, often combined with other modalities as warranted in the case. However, radiation comes in two formats, either stereotactic radiosurgery or whole brain radiation. Lately, there has been increasing evidence for a modified whole brain radiation called hippocampal avoidance. All of these strategies aim to do the same thing, that is to control CNS disease and limit the negative side effects to the patient. The use of stereotactic radiosurgery has revolutionized the treatment for patients with newly diagnosed or recurrent brain metastasis. This was first evaluated in patients with recurrent disease after they had received whole brain radiation therapy, but multiple subsequent trials have evaluated the role of primary stereotactic radiosurgery alone in patients with newly diagnosed brain metastasis. At present, we currently use stereotactic radiosurgery for patients who have a single lesion, multiple lesions, recurrent disease, and even for patients who have larger brain metastasis, there are new techniques for delivering the radiation safely and effectively so that these patients don't need to receive whole brain radiation therapy. We tend to use stereotactic radiosurgery in these patients, preferentially over whole brain radiation, in order to try and lengthen survival as much as possible and diminish the likely cognitive decline associated with whole brain radiation. But now, with the publication of hippocampal avoidance whole brain strategies, demonstrating a categorical benefit from hippocampal avoidance. This is also an extremely viable option. So for patients with multiple brain metastases with a potential target that's present, we would also consider hippocampal avoidance whole brain radiation with the targeted agent. The key difference between stereotactic radiosurgery and whole brain radiation therapy is the time needed to deliver the treatment, typically one, three, or as many as five treatments versus the five to 10 treatments of whole brain radiation, as well as the need for patients to stop their systemic therapy with whole brain radiation therapy, which we don't need to do with stereotactic radiosurgery. Finally, there's been some encouraging data that shows that stereotactic radiosurgery really augments the response that you receive with other systemic therapies that have blood-brain barrier penetration. So for patients who are going to receive surgical resection of their brain metastasis, radiosurgery can be considered either before or after surgery. We favor preoperative stereotactic radiosurgery if it can be delivered for a variety of reasons. Now, first of all, compared to postoperative stereotactic radiosurgery, preoperative stereotactic radiosurgery offers similar rates of local control, disease free survival, and overall survival, which would not be unexpected. However, the key differences are that preoperative stereotactic radiosurgery is easy to deliver given that the patient has an intact metastasis instead of a post-operative cavity, as well as there are reduced side effects. There's a lower risk of radiation necrosis with preoperative radiosurgery. Finally, with post-operative radiosurgery, there's a concern for leptomeningeal spread of disease, which has not been observed in patients who received preoperative stereotactic radiosurgery. Now, a prospective clinical trial is warranted to really compare these two treatment modalities to determine the optimal timing for radiosurgery in patients who are going to undergo resection. This is a case example of a 48-year-old male with metastatic renal cell carcinoma who had failed multiple lines of systemic therapy and presented to me with intracranial disease progression. This is an axial MRI sequence that shows an enhancing lesion in the right frontal area that was causing this man to have significant arm weakness. There's considerable vasogenic edema surrounding this lesion. Given this patient's otherwise excellent performance status and radio-resistant histology, given his primary cancer being renal cell carcinoma, we decided to treat this patient with stereotactic radiosurgery. Given the size of the lesion and the eloquence of the cortex that were treated, we decided to use a hypofractionated course, and we treated this patient to a dose of 27 gray in three fractions. As you can see here, this is the radiation treatment plan for this patient, and you can see how precise the radiation ice dose line is surrounding the tumor with no dose of radiation to the rest of the brain. Now, one week after stereotactic radiosurgery, this patient received nivolumab, and he was admitted one week later with significant weakness in the left hemi body for which he was hospitalized. You can see the axial MRI from his planning scan at the time of radiosurgery to the 
MRI scan at the time that he was hospitalized that shows an increase in size of the vasogenic edema surrounding that lesion. This area is the, corresponds to his left hemibody weakness. Now, despite the concern for potential tumor progression after this patient was treated with radiosurgery, we decided to treat this patient with a steroid taper and then discharge him to a rehabilitation hospital. These are comparison axial MRIs that show the lesion at the time that he was hospitalized as well as just three weeks later, and you can show a significant tumor response as well as dramatic reduction in the surrounding vasogenic edema. This patient walked into our clinic and you wouldn't have even known that he had cancer. After some intense reaction in terms of inflammation in the brain with the combination, he then went on to have a near complete to complete response of this dominant lesion, recovering his neurologic function to baseline and had no residual weakness after just three months on therapy. The patient went on to have new metastases that were again treated with radiosurgery and again had dramatic responses near complete by the time of last visit. So one of the concerns with treating patients with larger brain metastasis, and by larger we think of three to four centimeters in size, is that the local control rates with primary serotactic radiosurgery alone, typically delivered in a single fraction, are quite low and really inferior to whole brain radiation therapy, typically on the order of 50% or even less. So those local control rates are really poor, and therefore we need to develop alternative means of delivering the radiation safely, but allowing us to deliver it focally. Now to do this, we use two different methods in our clinic. The first one is a fractionated approach of radiation, where instead of a single treatment, we divide the treatment in three or five fractions. This allows us to give a higher total dose of radiation more safely, and does improve the local control. A second option is to do what's called a staged approach, where we give the patient a single dose of radiation at a lower dose, and then bring them back four weeks later and give an extra boost dose of radiation at that time. This technique has also been shown to improve the local control rate compared to the historical standard with a low incidence of side effects or toxicity. So traditionally, whole brain radiation therapy was used for any patient diagnosed with brain metastasis. However, in the era of stereotactic radiosurgery, as well as systemic therapies that have blood-brain barrier penetration, the role of whole brain radiation therapy has been quite diminished. At present, we currently use it for patients who have innumerable brain metastasis, those with a specific histology, such as small cell lung cancer, which has a propensity for distant intracranial failure after primary stereotactic radiosurgery, or for patients who have a very poor performance status. As well as those for leptomeningeal disease, whole brain radiation therapy has always remained the standard of care for these patients. Now there is new research looking at the role of whole brain radiation therapy in patients who quickly fail with new lesions after they receive primary stereotactic radiosurgery, and this research is ongoing at present. Back in the 1950s, whole brain radiotherapy was employed first to manage the symptoms induced by brain metastasis. And this, together with dexamethasone or steroid therapy, became the standard of care for patients with brain metastasis for several decades thereafter. Recently, the widespread utilization of stereotactic radiosurgery has supplanted whole brain radiotherapy in many situations and many settings. Often people view this in a black and white scenario, that either you choose whole brain radiotherapy or you choose stereotactic radiosurgery. The reality of it, however, is that a balanced perspective of both probably offers the patients the most judicious approach. There's clearly a need to manage widespread metastatic disease in the brain in some patients, and those patients need whole brain radiotherapy. There's a group of patients with very limited disease where radiosurgery plays a major role. And then there is an intermediate group where the utilization of both therapies, stereotactic radiosurgery to enhance local control, and whole brain radiotherapy to avoid the re-emergence and the recurrence of disease in the rest of the brain are critical elements. With the advent of neuroprotective strategies like hippocampal avoidance and memantin, the incorporation of the two together, hippocampal avoidant whole brain radiation and stereotactic radiosurgery, could see significant resurgence in the future.
In 2018, a major trial was reported out uh, at the SNOW meeting as well as at the ASTRO meeting. This was NRG CC001. This trial randomized patients with multiple brain metastases who would typically be eligible for whole brain radiotherapy to whole brain radiotherapy alone or together with the uh, agent memantin, which had previously been demonstrated to have neurocognitive protective effect, or the same regimen with hippocampal avoidant whole brain radiotherapy. So the real question was a single approach of neuroprotection, memantin with whole brain radiation, or a dual approach, whole brain radiation with memantin and hippocampal avoidance. The trial accrued rather rapidly and dramatically, completed accrual two years in advance, and the trial was significantly positive in favor of hippocampal avoidance and memantin uh, in the context of whole brain radiotherapy. These patients had a substantial reduction in the hazard of cognitive decline, and therefore the results of this trial now imply that patients that have the potential for surviving approximately four months or longer would likely benefit from a cognitive perspective with the use of whole brain radiation and memantin. What is really intriguing when one cross compares data across trials, which is always a little hazardous, the hazard ratio for cognitive decline between studies that use stereotactic radiosurgery alone and studies that use hippocampal avoidant whole brain radiotherapy are identical and comparable implying that whole brain radiotherapy with hippocampal avoidance might in fact be a very reasonable strategy to combine with stereotactic radiosurgery in patients with limited metastatic disease. We use both hippocampal avoidance whole brain radiotherapy and uh, agents such as memantin in patients that are destined to get whole brain radiotherapy. And clearly for patients that are not going to get whole brain radiotherapy, we prefer to use stereotactic radiosurgery. So these are the techniques we commonly employ to try and reduce the likelihood of cognitive decline. This is a case example of a 39-year-old male who presented with subacute headaches and gait instability that led to a high-altitude fall as he was a construction worker. These corresponding axial MRIs show numerous enhancing lesions in the posterior fossa consistent with brain metastasis. In fact, this patient had over 20 lesions just in the cerebellum alone, as well as effacement of the fourth ventricle and herniation of the right cerebellar tonsil. Given the number of lesions that this patient had and the location of their disease, we decided to treat this patient with the approach of whole brain radiation therapy using the hippocampal avoidance or hippocampal sparing radiation technique. As you can see here on this axial and sagittal planning CT, the isodose distribution shows treatment of the entire brain parenchyma with the radiation dose, but sparing of the hippocampus. This patient also received immune checkpoint inhibitors every two weeks during their course of radiation therapy. These are the axial MRIs for the patient treated with hippocampal sparing whole brain radiation therapy and concurrent immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy. At one and two months post his hospitalization, he continued this therapy with improvement in symptoms and reduction of all of the lesions that were treated. This is an example of the incredible treatment response that we can achieve in patients treated with radiation therapy and immune checkpoint inhibitors. Hippocampal avoidance whole brain radiotherapy is a challenging and sophisticated technique. It requires not just the physician to be able to accurately contour the hippocampus, which therefore requires a high quality baseline MR imaging study, which is not necessarily acquired all the time in patients with metastatic disease, but also the ability of the physicist and the dosimetrist to generate an adequate plan to cover the target and yet produce as low a dose as possible in the hippocampus. These challenges can be overcome with practice and training, but currently for several centers, if they've not done this, uh, this can remain a technical challenge. Thank you.